What's going on today, guys? It's that time of year to start uh, pre-emergence. So we picked up a little bit of this. Uh, this is a, a new brand, but it's same old, same old uh, Prodiamine WDG65. It's a water dispersible granule. We're getting it in 10-pound bags, and it's coming in these <coughs> five-pound jugs, and I've used <coughs> several in the jugs, and I use to keep the jugs too. They're handy for the empty jugs are handy for mixing uh, water dispersible granules. Um, but this is, you know, same old, same old, a 65% uh, for diamine in a water dispersible granule form. It's January. It's time to start getting this pre-emergence out. We'll explain why. Stay tuned. All right, pre-emergence. There's there's lots of options out there. This is America, baby. We got choices, um, but some of them aren't all that different, and uh, some of them might be more suited for you in different situations. Uh, probably two of the more common are something like uh, dithiapyr and prodiamine. We do not use. I I don't know. Why I say we, I don't use a lot of dithiapyr. Uh, Dithiopyr is a severe root pruner, and uh, which means that it can damage your turf, especially shallow rooted turfs like Centipede and sometimes St. Augustine, uh, because you know how a pre-emergent works is, well, a pre-emergent like Dithiopyr and Prodiamine is they make a barrier in the soil that when the seed germinates, the root won't uh, take. And it, in some cases it can club the roots or prune the roots on your uh, existing turf or any stolons or rhizomes that are coming off of that turf. When it tries to put down a root, it'll it'll bounce off of that pre-emergent layer and the grass won't uh, tack down. So uh, what you'll run into is in any circumstance of drought or heat stress or anything like that, the grass will crap out. And I've seen centipede where you could just come over and pick the whole thing up, man, <laughs> it was so bad. Or when you turn, when the people turn on the lawnmowers, they dig up big chunks of it. So if you over apply, you can definitely have that problem. And in, in some of the grasses like centipede, uh, with, with prodiamine or dithiopyr, you can run into some pretty major problems with uh, root pruning from, from using that product. Um, the difference in dithiopyr and prodiamine basically is prodiamine has no post-emergent capability is where dithiopyr or dithiopyr, however you want to say it, can uh, have some post-emergent effects on things like young crabgrass. And honestly, with this winter uh, pre-emergent we're putting down, this is for the spring. Uh, so. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense we're doing it now, but it's for the spring. But we want to get it down before these weeds emerge so they don't have the chance to, to pop up and be a problem later down the road. So where you, I would use Dithiapyr, and, I, and, I, and I, I don't even use it in this case, but where it would be a useful tool to people is if <coughs> you were late getting on a property and crabgrass had already started to germinate, not to the point to where you've got massive crabgrass all over the place, but when you're in that time window, when you're pretty certain crabgrass has germinated. And in my area, you know, that's uh, April, May. Uh, and you, you won't even really see it yet, but it's in there. So the dithiopyr will have some effect on that smaller tiller crabgrass, but what I prefer to do is do something that's going to kill crabgrass uh, like quinclorac uh, and combine that with a prodiamine and go ahead and spray that property. <coughs> and I might even combine the quinclorac with other products depending on what kind of weeds I got there. But we're, we're mainly talking about crabgrass control when we're going after this uh, winter 
what I call winter, but it's uh, it's actually the spring pre-emergent, but we're getting it down mid to late winter. You can use prodiamine on any turf type, uh, meaning cool season, warm season. Like I said, the biggest drawback of it is for something like centipede, because I feel like that it's just too uh, detrimental to the root system. If you have a centipede yard that you have historically had a ton of problems with crabgrass and things like that, I, I roll the dice and I go ahead and apply my prodiamine. Um, when using prodiamine, I like to split the rate. And what that means is the, the product is in that water dispersible granule. It looks like little ground up stuff. It's just usually yellow. Uh, but that you dissolve that and put it in your liquid and spray it. You can also get fertilizers or just a straight product that is, you're able to broadcast. Uh, and that, that works well too, but the, the granular type that has to be broadcast, it's a, it's a definite must to order it in. You gotta order both of them in, by the way, but the, uh, the broadcast type won't, won't hit on a thing unless it gets watered in because it has to dissolve and, and spread out. Um, I mostly use the spray on type. Some people are, are really like to use the broadcast kind. It's up to you. I don't, I don't know what the, I mean, if there is any difference in uh, how well one works versus, versus the other, <clears throat> but I feel better about my coverage with, with spraying it on and I can combine other products with it when I spray it on. And usually I, it's very rare for me that I just go out and spray only per diamine on the lawn. Um, if we're going out, we're usually going to see, especially in the warm season lawns, because I haven't, uh, I haven't, <coughs> sorry, I got all choked up this morning on something. I haven't uh, got out and sprayed those uh, very recently because we've been fooling around with fescue. So the warm season lawns are going to be having some weeds coming in. And some of the fescue lawns, we've already come back and, and, and hit with our follow-up fertilizer round and we sprayed some post-emergent on them and but they're in pretty good shape. There's a few that we need to knock some weeds out of. This, I'm getting off top. I do that. Anyway, so <coughs> with the with the prodiamine on the warm season lawns, like split the app. Uh, so it's a 65% product and what our end goal is, is to get a pound of actual active ingredient on the ground. So out of that, if I put one pound now of the the formulation, meaning I just dump a pound of what's in the bottle into my, uh, into my jug to dissolve it, to put into the sprayer, <coughs> that means I'm getting 0.65 of a pound down. So it's pretty easy math. So, what I will do is I'll spray that now in January, February timeframe and come back probably in May and spray that remaining, uh, what is that, 35%? Yeah, 35% down. So, and usually I'll go a little over, I'll, I'll put down uh, or get right in that range of getting down a quarter pound to a half a pound on that second, uh, that second app, but it's, it's pretty easy on that one because we're just using a, a pound, and the uh, it's a 65 uh, WDG 65 is what they call it, meaning it's 65 percent of that what's in that jug is per diving. The other is like some kind of clay that they use for a carrier, and that has to be melted down to uh, to get the product in the solution. So some of the things we can bind right now with our prodiamine on warm season lawns, especially uh, uh, Bermuda, Zoysia, things like that, is uh, a uh, metal furon methyl. Uh, and that rate can depend, it can vary depending on what you're going after in the lawn. I usually do, you do not want to exceed one ounce per acre of that product and usually what we'll put in is about a half an ounce of methyl furon methyl to the acre. 
along with our pound of our diamine. And we might add something in like uh, sulfentrazone, dismiss, uh, putting that in at about six ounces per acre. So we could kind of get a broad spectrum of weeds with that. And the uh, sulfentrazone is a little faster acting. And uh, in the cooler weather, a lot of things can be slow, but the sulfentrazone still does okay. If it's really cold, it's not, you're, you're not gonna do a lot of weed killing in cold weather because of the uh, biology in those plants is moving really slow. And so it's gonna have a hard time moving throughout the plant to kill that weed. It's gonna be really slow. Uh, lots of your popular summertime weed killers like uh, Celsius, for example. Celsius is almost almost ineffective in, in cooler weather. Uh, it, it, the hotter it gets, the better that product seems to work. And I know I'm off-roading from pre-emergence a little bit, but I'm just talking about things you can combine. Uh, Ester-based uh, products like the 2,4-D ester, triclopyr ester, are good things to add in with your pre-emergent in cooler weather. Because, you know, obviously, if you're trying to put this out in a January, February time frame, more than likely it's gonna be cooler weather. Uh, we have some, obviously there's days that we have warmer weather than others. If it's below freezing, don't even waste your time getting out there trying to spray. You could get down that prodiamine if you wanted to. You have a hard time spraying in below freezing temperatures, obviously, because your damn sprayer's gonna freeze up. But and just temperature tips. We uh, try to operate 50 and above, days 50 and above. Sometimes we gotta. Sometimes we gotta bend it because we got crap to do, people. For Bermuda lawns, obviously you can use prodiamine, and we do use a ton of it on Bermuda lawns. Some select Bermuda lawns, we like to go big time and get down some Shore Guard. Shore Guard is a fantastic pre-emergent. It's a little pricey. Uh, it's Flumi Oxizen, and uh, the Flumi is not so much depending on temperature to kill the weeds, it uh, reacts to the plant and its processes it takes with sunlight. So if you got, if you put down your flumey and it rains on it and you get a nice sunny day afterwards, you're gonna zap some stuff. And it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty impressive and uh, noticeable when it happens. <laughs> so that, that is your dormant Bermuda grass go to if you've got one that's that's high profile and looks great and you want to keep it looking great uh i like to get down that flumioxazin in this time frame and uh i'll combine that you combine it with glyphosate glufosinate you know those are non-selectives so you're going to kill anything that's green and the flumioxazin also has the tendency to kill anything that's green this time of year so it's for dormant bermuda grass only so you can combine those uh, <coughs> non-selectives with it to, to boost it up and get it rolling. Or uh, a lot of times we might even just uh, add the methyl furon methyl with it, uh, 2,4-D ester, things like that. But it, mainly we spray that with glyphosate or methyl furon or combination. Flumiox, Shore Guard. And it uh, has a pretty long residual, but <laughs> um, I do like to uh, give that a booster shot in, uh, uh, you know, maybe even on up into June, come in with a little uh, half pound rate of prodiamine when you're back visiting those yards. And it'll keep you pretty much clean through August, with things like crabgrass. Pretty decent, uh, one of the better things as far as a pre-emergent for something like uh, uh, goose grass. It seems to help me control goose grass a little better than just a straight prodiamine out, especially when I put that prodiamine booster in in about late May, mid June, something like that. The uh, Flumiox is an also a great uh, pre emergent for beds. You can put about four ounces in a four gallon backpack sprayer, uh, along with a little glyphosate, a couple ounces of glyphosate, and spray your, your, uh, beds and it'll keep them clean for six to nine months. So it's a pretty useful product and I love it on dormant Bermuda grass only. Keep that in mind. All right, so we said that uh, centipede 
didn't react very well to prodiamine and dithiapyr. Uh, what I, oh, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna back up, we're gonna back up. Another great thing about flumeoxazin for a pre-emergent on Bermuda grass is flumeoxazin is not a root pruner at all. So if you've got Bermuda grass that's uh, typically underperforming in some shady areas that you've pre-emerged year after year after year, if you start running that uh, flumeoxazin pre-emergent on it instead, the shore guard, you'll see that grass over time start to thicken up and put down better roots and, and do much better. So keep that in mind. So we said that, uh, back to centipede now, that was a cut in. So we're going to go back to uh, centipede now. Uh, I said that I don't like to use uh, prodiamine or dithiapyr on centipede lawns. If, if I have a major crabgrass problem, sometimes you just you just do it. Uh, but typical centipede yards that I uh, feel like I can control the crabgrass in or whatever, uh, we do a lot of uh, atrazine or simazine on these centipede yards. Uh, Atrazine, not really a good product for homeowners, and it's, it's a very old product, and it gets kind of a bad rep because it's very mobile in the soil. And if you get a lot of rain, you can get it in the groundwater, you can get it in the stream runoff, or it can run into uh, shrub beds, kill shrubs. Uh, so you have to be extremely careful with atrazine, and I don't recommend that for homeowners. But it can be very effective uh, for centipede. You can use it on dormant Bermuda, so we do that kind of thing too, I think. So uh, you do not want to spray atrazine on green uh, Bermuda though. Uh, so centipede St. Augustine, we we'll use an atrazine sometimes. Well, actually we use a lot of that. But uh, one trick that I like to do with my atrazine is run that with some crop oil concentrate in it and that holds it in that top level of soil profile where it can still stay in there and act as a pre-emergent. It has a lot of post-emergent capabilities too. Uh, it, it, it is mainly a post-emergent, but it, it has a very long residual and can keep killing those weeds for months on end. So uh, in the centipede lawns, I prefer to use atrazine or simazine, run a little crop oil in it, and again, combine that with something like Manor, the, the methyl furon methyl at quarter to a half an ounce per acre of methyl furon methyl. Don't try that at home, kids. Good thing about combining some uh, different post-emergent products with this uh, winter, well, the spring, uh, we should call this the spring pre-emergent uh, application is on warm season lawns, I generally, on most of them, I get to a few of them, but most of them I do not get the chance to put a fall pre-emergent down on them. And fall pre-emergents are gonna help you with things, mainly, the fall application is gonna help you with things mainly like hen bit and poannual are some of the biggest ones, and chickweed and all that. Uh, hen bit and chickweed, really easy to kill with a, you know, just a basic three-way herbicide if you got good enough temperatures to get it in. Um, but uh, poannual is terrible in, uh, in uh, especially dormant uh, warm season lawns because it's green and it sticks out like a sore thumb. But the good thing is uh, things like atrazine, methyl furon can kill poannual post emergently. And definitely, if you're going with that glyphosate, flumeoxazin application on uh, on a dormant Bermuda lawn, it'll it'll smoke that uh, that poannual out. Uh, there's there's plenty of uh, of options in a warm season lawn to kill poannual, uh, especially sulfonylureas like Katana, uh, Mariner, uh, methyl furon, things like that. But uh, there there's there's a host of things to kill poannual in uh, dormant warm season lawns. Getting off of the pre-emergent topic again, but that's in this time frame, things like that are what you're going to be doing alongside of that uh, winter, spring, spring uh, pre-emergent application that we're making. Now killing those winter weeds off as we put down the pre-emergent for the uh, 
summer or spring problems. They're gonna have, they're coming, they're coming, baby. All right, now to the fescue lawns. Uh, on the fescue yards, we, we've already come through and made a fertilizer app and post on some of them uh, in the uh, November, December, early December range. It's January, early January now. Uh, when we get to the fescue lawns, we'll be looking at making a one pound actual product per diamine application and then we'll come back in about May and put down another half pound to carry us throughout the year. So that's going to help us with things like crabgrass mainly. Uh, can, can help somewhat with buttonweed, things like that. Um, any, any weed that comes from a seed, you know, you're going to have winter annuals and summer annuals. So the idea of a fall pre-emergent is to stop winter annuals. The idea of a spring pre-emergent that we're putting down now in the winter. So I was, that's why I keep calling it the winter pre-emergent is uh, to stop summer weeds at the biggie bee and crabgrass and on the fall when the biggie bee and things like uh, poe annual. But a lot of pre-emergents are not that effective on poe annual. Uh, one of the more effective warm season uh, uh, pre-emergents that uh, I don't have a lot of experience with, but they're saying it's pretty good on poe annual is uh, a spectacle. Uh, I haven't used a lot of it, so I can't really speak to it, just what I've heard everybody else say about it, and they say it's pretty all right on Poe So if you want to look into spectacle for your warm season lawns, research it and see what you think about it. <clears throat> I, have, I have opted out of the spectacle train for now. Uh, I, like, like I said, this fall pre-emergent on warm season lawns is not that big of a deal to me. I usually skip it, and in the long runs, my lawns are a little healthier for it because I didn't prune the roots on them. You know, over you can over apply for your methods, definitely, and screw up your roots. So, I this this one now though, this uh, spring winter one is the most important because <clears throat> things like crabgrass and many more hard to control weeds can be a pain in the butt in uh, in your in your lawns. And obviously, we don't fall pre-emerge a lot of the fescue because we're overseeding at that time. In the fescue, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our prodiamine at a one pound rate. And if we've got weed issues in the lawns, we're gonna go with a uh, something like cool power, depending on what weeds we're seeing. Uh, uh, but cool power, uh, pretty good for what we're seeing in fescue lawns right now. Cool power, four speed, uh, uh, maybe even uh, speed zone. Uh, these ester formulations are better in the cooler weather. And we, in the, with the cool power, if I've got some stuff I want to go ahead and, and burn down or maybe worried about some sedges or something, with that prodiamine and cool power, I may add some dismiss to the tank. Uh, I mean, we're not gonna be seeing sedges now, but you know, we can start laying down that basis to prevent them with something like a regular a uh, few additives of winter's on in every application. It's going to help you burn down the weeds that you're seeing now, and uh, it can help you actually prevent sedges. That's my thoughts anyway. Uh, uh, things like uh, Solero uh, and, and in cool season, certainty in warm season can also do the same thing. Uh, as far as we, we were talking about sedges, uh, can help you uh, if, if you get those applications in early and make a couple of them you can actually reduce or eliminate your populations of things like sedges and kalingas <coughs> so in cool season grass solero sulfentrazone in warm season grass uh, bermuda especially things like uh, monument certainty uh, house of huron don't, I don't know that stacking house of furon early will really help you uh, prevent sedges, but it definitely will kill present sedges. But uh, I have had really good su success with uh, things like sulfentrazone in every application because it's just it's so effective at quickly burning down a lot of uh, different broadleafs 
and it's pretty good on sedges and kalingas. And so that's kind of a, an additive to a lot of uh, the tank mixes. So sulfentrazone, dismiss. dismiss. Don't dismiss that advice. And uh, the Solero, same thing. Solero has uh, post-emergent uh, capability on a few broadleaf weeds like uh, burrweed, things like that, but not a ton, but it's very effective on sedges and clings. I did, I did say Solero, right? Solero. And you can use that on cool season or warm season or certainty or monument, something like that on Bermuda Zoysia. All right, well, there's just a broad blabber on a few uh, uh, pre-emergent uh, ideas, strategies, thoughts, whatever. But anyway, with the with the perdiamine, which is going to be probably the most popular pre-emergent, probably what you're going to be seeing the most of, probably what most of you use, and probably what I use most of. Uh, <coughs> you're going to want to get get it down now in this January, February window at about a three quarters of the rate and then follow up with the rest of the rate in uh, in May, June, April, something like that. So the the if you apply if I if you put down the whole application now in theory in perfect conditions it can stretch you out for about six or eight months but I've I've never really got that much control on this one application, six, eight to even nine months even. I've never got that much control on the one big application, but it'll definitely be strong from now till May or June if you get that one pound in and then that extra half pound of, uh, of product can roll you on through August, which is probably about when you're gonna, you know, not be worried about crabgrass germination anymore. So there, there's your, there's your uh, uh, pre-emergent overview. Very, I'm sure I left a bunch of stuff out and that there's, I mean, I'm just, just sitting here talking off the top of my head, folks. I don't, I don't have any notes. See, I don't have any notes. Just, just me. Um, anywho, we're gonna quit blabbing. I gotta get out and get some yard sprayed. Uh, today, we're actually gonna be hitting some centipede and uh, a few dormant Bermuda yards. These are some yards that I hadn't been on in a long time. And a couple of them are new that I haven't been on all. And some of them, I got some folks squawking that they got some issues that we gotta go look at. So today we're probably gonna be spraying, uh, since they're centipede, atrazine and methylfuron. So I'll take you along with me and we'll get a little, little shot at what that looks like. Stay tuned. So we have what I like to refer to as the warm season permagreen loaded up, ready to rock and roll. Warm season permagreen. This is my older unit, but I've repowered it with the Vanguard. Vanguard don't mind the cold weather. It's not really cold, but it's like 48 and it's early in the morning. So it's, it's ticking up. So we should have our good 50, 55 degree spraying temperatures that I want today. I'd like for it to be warmer, but you know, it's January. Right, this first one we're going to, it's actually a Bermuda lawn. I, mean, I told this lady about a month ago I would come out and spray the yard and I hadn't made it yet. So let's, let's make this the first stop today. Um, it is Bermuda. I'm going to be spraying primarily uh, centipede in St. Augustine today, but I'm going to go ahead and spray it with the same thing that I would spray the uh, centipede in St. Augustine with, uh, which is going to be some atrazine, some mesofuron, and maybe a little bit of dismiss in the tank. Uh, well, I'm saying that without seeing it, so I mean, we might, I might need to look at it first, but uh, you know. It's been kind of we've been kind of in limbo on getting these uh, Bermuda lawns sprayed because up until the week leading into Christmas, there was still a lot of green in a lot of the uh, St. Augustine, a lot of the zoysia, the Bermuda even, because uh, it just hadn't been cold enough to zap it. But we had some pretty severe cold weather uh, right around Christmas, and it went ahead and 
put uh, all these warm season turfs into dormancy and also uh, <laughs> whacked a lot of the cool season grass just beat it up um, especially uh, ryegrass man the ryegrass got punished by this cold weather I'm not exactly sure why it took it so much harder than the fescue but some of the fescues tip burned and looks a little stunted and stuff but it's it's gonna be all right to come back so let's go check out this yard I'm not going to spray any uh for diamine on this yard but uh, this is how we were i was buying my for diamine in these 10 pound bags and a case had uh, five of them in it so you get a 50 pound case and I measure it out with this cup but now we're gone to this my supplier has gone to this here this is a just a five pound jug same same thing in it basically it's made by a different manufacturer Got it sprayed pretty quick. Just a lot of plantain, chickweed, hen bit, dandelions, what you'd expect to see. I hadn't treated this yard in forever. I, I didn't do anything to it last year. And it's it's really thinned out real bad. This tank mix, by the way, is gonna be real detrimental to the neighbor's ryegrass, so I tried not to get any too far into his yard there. Right. This is a St. Augustine yard and uh, I, you might remember this one from some other videos. I picked this one up last summer. They had dumped a bunch of dirt on it and I was spent all summer trying to push the, the St. Augustine to cover that. And it got a, dirt had a bunch of goose grass in it and I had a massive uh, session with a blowtorch out here for about two hours trying to get the goose grass out of it with a blowtorch. But uh, got some weeds in it. We're gonna spray yeah, This is just amazing to me. As cold as it's been. That's uh, green St. Augustine. All right, the, the backyard here is in really good shape, the St. Augustine. And then I just sprayed not this one, but the next one over, uh, Centipede. It's in pretty good shape, too. Just cleaning them up. Another one knocked down here. This is a uh, St. Augustine. I've had this one a long time. He's just got a couple little patchy weeds. All right, I've got one, two, three four offices in a row and a house in the middle that we're going to do right here. Uh, some of them are St. Augustine, some of them are Centipede, some of them are uh, Centipede Bermuda blended. But uh, we do these a few times a year just to keep them clean. This nice cigar here from Greg Roman at New Farm. That's no way going to influence my opinion and what I'm going to say. I mean, I can't be bought. It's a good cigar. New Farm is better than cold beer, better than a laughing baby. Why go to the old farm when there's a new farm? New Farm, the greatest chemical company ever in the history of the world. New Farm, goodness from the earth. All right, we're back at the lab now. Uh, got some of that centipede and St. Augustine sprayed. Got a few other things to run out and do. I just had to come back by here to pick something up. But anyway, I'm gonna make a long video. Had a shameless advertisement in there. That was comedy in case you're anybody gonna crack down on me or anything, the YouTube thought police. But anyway, thanks for watching. Hit me up in the comments if you got any uh, questions or anything. And I'll try to make up an answer. See you next time.